Hey friend, we're Lisa Lord and Sarah Jacobson, and this is the Christian Business Breakdown, a podcast for faith-led business owners to start, build, and scale their business, all without second-guessing their every move. We're former teachers turned business owners who finally broke down and let go of trying to run our businesses the way everyone said we should. If you're ready to become the expert in your business and stop trying to do all the things, we've got you covered. You can start with Sarah or level up with Lisa all right here on this one podcast. It's time to set aside your never-ending to-do list, pop in your earbuds, take a deep breath, and join us each week. We equip you with the tools and skills you need to be an empowered CEO, discerning the best strategies to maximize impact and income for your unique business. And we even have a little fun along the way. We love practical business strategies, Jesus, and keeping it real. It's time to break it down. Welcome to the Christian Business Breakdown. Today, we have a treat for you. Our friend, Kristen from Jack Robin Company is here to talk to us about SEO, search engine optimization, something that is really overwhelming and confusing for a lot of people, including me. Last summer, I started to realize I needed some help in this area. I started following Kristen on Instagram. A few of my other photographer friends use her. So I just started to see this value that she has. And last fall, I hired her to do my SEO for my website and my blog. And she has done amazing things. I'm already seeing a ton of growth in my business because of what she has helped me with. So she's here to help us break it down, to help give us ideas, to make it less scary and overwhelming. So here we go. Well, welcome, Kristen, to the Christian Business Breakdown. Why don't you start out by just giving us a quick introduction to you, who you are, your family, and let us know a little bit about you. So my name is Kristen. I'm the owner of Jack Robin Company. I focus my efforts with wedding photographers, but I really work with any small business owner. My focus is on SEO because I believe, I know that that is how you create longevity in your business. So I focus on my SEO efforts with blogging, website audits and updates and really strategizing with each individual business owner for what their needs are, as well as the direction that they want to go moving forward. Okay. So since we're talking about SEO, and I know you've done SEO work for both Sarah and I and our The Christian Business Podcast, which we love you for that, which is why you're on here. But we want to know about the biggest mistakes that people make, because I think this is something I struggled with. And I thought I knew what I was, well, I never really knew what I was doing, because there's a lot of big words in SEO that are kind of confusing. Um, And then I would click on a link, and it would take me to another link with more confusing words and another link with more confusing words. And so getting together with you was so helpful. But tell us, what are the three biggest mistakes that you see people making when it comes to their SEO? So SEO stands for search engine optimization. And the key to it is finding a key phrase or a keyword that has a high volume. A lot of people are looking for it, but it's not competitive. So it has a low density. The biggest struggle I have with every client I work with almost is them using their name as one of their key phrases. And by that, I mean, On the back end of every image, in the alt text or in the title, they have their name or their company's name. So instead of ranking and having the opportunity to rank, for example, Denver wedding photographer, they're ranking for their name. Where when somebody is looking for a Denver wedding photographer, they're more than likely not going to type in that person's name. They're going to type in Denver wedding photographer. It's just losing that opportunity for using keywords by replacing them with your name or your business's name. (laughs) I've done that. (laughs) We take a guess at what we think it should be. So Kristen, can you tell us where we would use SEO? So definitely in the context of your website and your titles, your headings, your paragraphs, it's everywhere. Your meta descriptions on the back end of your images, page titles, page descriptions. There's so many places to use SEO and it's a lot to take in, especially if you're new to it. But when you learn the background of how Google crawls websites and how they index websites, you learn how to be more efficient in your SEO. So I guess the answer is everywhere. (laughs) Would I use SEO on YouTube, on Pinterest, Or is it really, are you really just speaking specifically to my website where I want to be found in order to sell my services or my product? That's a really great question, actually. There is a search engine on every single platform we use. Instagram has its own search engine, Pinterest, YouTube, Google, obviously. Everywhere has a search engine. And how we optimize looks differently for every search engine. So for example, what I do for a client on their website And the key phrases and keywords I'm using there are going to be different than what I use on their Pinterest. So just knowing the back end of each, I personally specialize on Google and Bing. So World Wide Web, 
search engines, as well as Pinterest. Those are just where my niche lies. But yeah, it's I don't know anything else about YouTube. I know a little bit about Instagram. But that's why it's so important to work with somebody who specializes in the platform that you're trying to use at the moment. Right. And so is your website a good place to start as a business owner with SEO? Is that kind of the easiest entry point? I would say so, yes. Especially um, if you have a service that you want people to find you through Google, if that's where you want most of your leads to come through, which I think most business owners do want to show up on like the first or second page of Google, definitely. I always recommend you start with your website and then build up from there because that's an investment that will serve you for years and years to come. And this is like you're playing SEO, you're playing the long game, right? Oh, yeah, 100%. And when you say long game, are you talking years? Or are you talking like six to eight months for those who are just kind of starting out with this? <laughs> How long are we talking here? Yeah, we're talking years. <laughs> so it takes about you can submit URLs to be indexed within a couple weeks through Google as well as Bing. However, for your URLs to mature, you need at least six months. Uh, That's how long it will take for you to start ranking and showing up on the search engines with a specific keyword. If you want to be ranking on the first page of Google, like today, you should have started like a year or two ago. I have had great success stories where somebody goes from the sixth page of Google to the first page within like an eight month period, which I never advertise is what right. happens, but it has happened a couple of times if you're really strategic and you're really aggressive in how you implement your Got keywords. It. So going back to that first mistake that you said people make is they they want to rank for their name. So they think, oh, I'll rank for Sarah Jacobson. But the reality is no one is searching for how to start a business with Sarah Jacobson, right? Exactly. So you're not saying that I shouldn't use that as my domain name. I could use that as, you know, sarahjacobson.com and my Mine's actually Sarah A. Jacobson, um, dot com. You're not saying that. You're just saying for ranking as far as SEO to not use your name. Can you talk a little bit more about that? So there's opportunities throughout your entire website to implement SEO. And you have you have your titles, you have your headings, even your domain can be, even your domain can play a part in your SEO and it can help you. For example, um, most recently I had a client and a new wedding photographer popped up in their area and their URL was like jacksonholeweddingphotographer.com. So their URL helped them hit the first page of Google quicker because they were using their keyword in that URL. So URLs definitely help if you optimize them. But if you already have a domain and you like your domain, it fits your brand. I definitely say that you can go ahead and just be aggressive and optimizing everywhere else in your website. I think that's helpful to know that like the time to work with someone who's who specializes in SEO is way at the beginning. I had already bought a domain. I had already had stuff set up before I found you. And so the best advice is almost to get with someone yeah. to strategize before you even pick that URL. Definitely. I would love to work from, with people from the get-go. But the fact of the matter is, that SEO is an investment and it is kind of a premium service in every industry. So usually it it is a, a bigger number and usually startups can't afford it so much. I always recommend get to know your niche. And you guys talked about this in a previous episode about zeroing in on what what you're doing and how that changes and evolves. And a lot of the times when I work with new business owners, they have an idea. They say, oh, I want to be a family and wedding photographer. And then a year or two later, they're strictly doing families. So I like to suggest for my new clients that are new into the business world to take a minute, decide what they really want to do, and then they can go ahead and invest in SEO. Because if you invest in your SEO in the very beginning, and then you totally change directions, that was kind of a waste of money. And that's not what I'm here for. (laughs) We want to make sure this investment is something that really pays off in the end. I started with you when I was like 10 years, 11 years into my business. And I was so frustrated because I felt like I kind of had done SEO and I'd been blogging and I'd been doing all the things I was supposed to be doing and it wasn't working. And then working with you, you really helped me find my keywords. I searched my own keywords. I just Googled them, like what I thought my keywords were going to be. And I was trying to rank for those. And that is not at all what I should have been ranking for. And I will say, since working with you, we started in like November, I think. I mean, I'm getting more and more Google inquiries all the time. Like I get them almost every day or several times a week where I was only getting them like once a month for the specific thing I was trying to rank for. So it's really helpful to have somebody step in there and and help you out with that. Can you give us some help around keywords? 
keywords? Because that's something I really struggled with. Everything you said made such a point in like my second <laughs> biggest mistake I see my clients make. So a lot of times you don't know what you're doing. Your niche isn't an SEO. So you just go to Google and you type in what you think people are looking for when right. they're trying to find you. However, what we don't realize is on Google, they fill in based on the algorithm that's been generated specifically for you. So every site has cookies. They're tracking what you're doing, what you're interested in. So how you, how they fill in the words after your key phrase. So for example, if you were to put Denver wedding photographer, they're going to fill in the rest of that sentence based on your searches, not based on your ideal client searches. So that's why a lot of the times people will say, I've been on Google and I've been looking through like suggested, you know, searches based on my keywords. And I tell them, I say, that is not where you want to be. So as far as keywords go, do not go to your competitors' websites and kind of stalk them, see what they're doing. Do not go to Google and just start typing Guilty. in. Guilty. <laughs> I think everyone is. <laughs> Each of these mistakes, I'm like, ooh, I've been done there, that. done that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And so help us, Kristen. Tell us what to do. <laughs> what you really want to do, uh, <laughs> I prefer going with a program like SEMrush. It's S-E-M Rush. And it's just such a great thing to have in your in your resources. So SEMrush is really unique in the way that it will tell you not only what a specific keyword is ranking for as far as searches per month, as well as the density or how competitive it is, how often other people are using it, but it'll also give you variations of that keyword. So let's say I type in Denver Wedding Photographer and it has a really good search volume, but it's also very competitive. SEMrush will also show me the variations of that keyword so that I can pick the one that best suits my needs and will be easiest for me to start ranking for. And that's what I did with both of you. And that's why, Lisa, you're starting to see more inquiries through Google because we picked keywords that, one, are being searched a lot and that are, two, not very competitive. So I always recommend finding a program that you vibe with, that you enjoy using to find those keywords. And that's another reason that I do what I do, because these programs, a lot of the times, they do come with a cost. You know, there are yearly subscriptions, of course, and that can be a lot for a small business owner. So instead, by going to an SEO expert and working with them, you can get a specific plan. You can have a walkthrough. It's a lot quicker than trying to do the research on your own. And in the end, it's going to be a lot more cost effective for you. I love that. And that that's so good for, for business owners to be able to discern, am I willing to spend the money myself and the time? And like, I know, Lisa, you had done SEO, but you had the wrong word. I words, tried. <laughs> and you were like off by an S, like adding an S at the end. And so you can decide. And for me, I just realized after I learned that from Lisa, that that was too stressful to me to spend that much time and energy and even money to like get a program like SEMrush and then get it wrong. And so that's why I personally decided as a business owner, it was time to invest with someone, take that stress off and let them be the expert at what they're doing. And that's exactly what Kristen did. She provided both Lisa and myself and our Christian business podcast, uh, break down podcast um, with the words that we should be using. So we didn't have to guess. And we knew that over the next six months, we were actually doing the right work, right? Oh, yeah, 100%. And I think also in addition to that, it's like, let's say six months goes by and you're not seeing progress. You have somebody to go to and say, I'm still struggling. What's going on? And I can look at the back end of your website. We can re- strategize what's going on and we can figure it out together. So you have someone on your side, on your team that's invested in helping you. I've never had a situation where somebody comes back to me and is like, why am I not growing? But if I did, dollars to donuts, I'm going to do everything in my power to get that going and re-strategize and help them. Uh, so that's another great benefit of, of finding an expert in SEO and trusting them and making sure that they're they have the integrity to follow through with their commitment to your business. Right. That's so good. It's so funny because I thought when I left my job in the world of education like I can't wait to be my own boss and make all the decisions. And now that I'm like into business and having my own business, I'm like who's going to help right. me because I don't want to make all the decisions. I want to pay someone else <laughs> to help Can me. Someone please boss me around. Like just tell me what to do. <laughs> and so I just have found like that has been so helpful with with Kristen and she provides these videos and it's like, do this, do this, don't do that. And I just am like, yes, that is exactly 
what I've needed because I'm tired of guessing and trying to figure it out on my own and wasting time and money doing it that way. Well, and for me as a business owner, I feel like one of my biggest struggles is now finding clients. And how do you find clients? Like how do people find like service providers or whatever, whatever we need, our fingers do the walking. We just go to mm-hmm. Google and we Google us and, yeah. and we don't understand exactly how Google works. And when Kristen explained some of that to me, it was like, oh, duh. Like, yeah. I mean, it's, it's stuff we feel yeah. like we should know, but it's, right. it, I, I'm not an SEO expert. And so I don't really want to be either. Me trying to DIY it. No, we love you, Kristen. Yeah. And yeah. what you do is amazing. You know, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad there are people who don't want to do it because I love it. Good. That's awesome. And I think it's it's a great investment because you're making a one-time investment in another small business owner like Kristen versus paying for ads week after week to Facebook, which is a great strategy. And I think that's one that a lot of people can use very effectively. But SEO is that more of a one-time investment to someone else, you know, business to business that can benefit us for the long term without having to shell out money every month to do it. Yep. Oh, 100%. Tell us the third biggest mistake. So we talked about The first one was uh, your keywords, like using the wrong keywords. Not using your name. Mm -hmm. Not using your name. Yeah, not using your name. What's the third one? Consistency is the third one. Oftentimes, you know, we implement SEO on the back end of our website, but you have to keep adding new pages to your website, preferably through blogs, but you can also add new galleries to your website as a page or new offers on your website as a page. But adding more pages to your website will keep Google coming back for more. They'll keep coming back to index and to crawl those pages. And it will show that your website has authority. And a lot of the times I'll give clients this great plan, they'll start growing and all of a sudden they see a plateau and we look and well, it's because they're not blogging. (laughs) So blogging makes such a huge difference. Adding those extra pages through blogs will keep Google coming back to your website so that you're continually coming up on Google's radar showing that you have a lot of authority in this field. You are a website that's producing new content, kind of like Instagram or Pinterest or really any platform rewards those content creators who are creating more and adding to their platform, Google does the same thing. So if we're adding new pages, specifically through blogs, we're adding new pages with new keywords that will help your ranking continue to grow. I would say the third one is definitely consistency. A lot of the times we have busy seasons in life where we stop blogging or we stop adding pages and we can see a dip in in numbers because of that. So blogging isn't dead, huh? Blogging isn't dead. <laughs> if you're using it correctly, you will see great growth. <laughs> well, and that's something you helped me with too, like is optimizing my blog and making sure like I have been blogging for like 10 years. I mean, I had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of blogs, but they weren't working for me. But the great thing about that is, is that I can go backwards now and optimize them. And they're so it's without having to write a bunch of new blogs, I can go back and just tweak all the blogs that I have to make them more SEO friendly. And that's been a huge thing for me because I, I just felt like I wasted all my time. And and Kristen's like, no, you did not waste your time. You just have to go back and optimize those. And that's so helpful. Definitely. I definitely had clients in the past where they say, oh, well, my blogs aren't doing anything. So I just deleted them all. Never delete your work because <laughs> you can optimize your blogs. You can go back and change things and make edits so that they will be optimized. And ultimately, and I'm sure Lisa, you know this, it takes a lot less time to go through and optimize your blog than to write a whole new yes, blog. It so does. if you do have the content, use it. So I have a question because I get tired of when I hear people say, be consistent, you know, they'll say, be consistent on social media. And it's like, I can't post three times a day on social media. I just can't. And so when you say consistency in posting a blog, is that once a week, can I see results from SEO if I'm posting one blog a week or one gallery a week? Or does it really need to be more than that? What a great question. (laughs) In the short answer, the more the better. If you are able to put out three or four blogs a week, wow, that is amazing. Do it. But if you're not, one blog a week is wonderful. That's what most of my clients uh, subscribe to. They want me to do one blog a week for a six month period and we see great growth. However, those clients that I work with that choose to have two or three blogs done a week, they see growth at a more accelerated rate. So it really just depends the time you have in um, that you can put into it. But yeah, I would say at least one blog a week 
that's what I prefer to do for my clients, but the more the merrier. That's a lot of blog writing. <laughs> it is a lot of blog writing. <laughs> how great that people could do that with you and to build their business quicker, but have somebody else do the work for them because there's so many other things as a business owner that we have to focus on. And so it can feel overwhelming, but we can, don't forget you guys, you can outsource these things. Like you don't have to do it all. And this is going to be something that is really going to help your bottom line. Yes, it's expensive, but it's also, I mean, expensive rate of return though, you have to think about those things too. And so being able to grow your business organically, if that's the way you want to do it is organically versus paid, paid ads, I mean, that this is a great way to do that. So my next question is, is if somebody didn't want to use an SEO expert like you right now, are there some things that they could be doing to be sure that they are actually using SEO to their you know biggest benefit? So when I first started my business, I didn't pay for SEMrush. I used the free version and there are so many limits to it. However, it got me started and I was still able to see results for my own business as well as other businesses with it. I would say it's better to pay for it, but if you're just getting started, I would go to SEMrush, make a free account, maybe watch a YouTube video or two, make a few Google searches about how to find specific keywords on SEMrush, how to work the site itself and the program, and just go from there. You can teach yourself so much just through the internet. And that's how I learned a lot of what I do is through personal experience, doing a lot of my own research, and it all paid off. So if I can do it, another small business owner can do. So if you are just starting out, I'd say do your research on SEMrush, start a free account, and figure it out. That's so helpful because sometimes, yeah, we don't have the resources or the money to pay someone to do it. But if you can get started, even if you are early on in your business and you're not exactly sure what you want to do, well, you could at least start. Starting is better than just sitting there. Like It's always better to do something than nothing. For sure. And not let the, the SEO part overwhelm you because there are a lot of great resources out there. It was just not something that was in my wheelhouse. <laughs> it felt like a foreign language. And I just, I couldn't, I, I was much better off spending my time investing in learning how to do some other things besides SEO. Oh yeah. So Kristen, what is, what, what is coming up next for you in your business? So many things. I'm so excited for the future. Right now I have, it's almost complete. I was going to launch it in February, but things got in the way. So this March I am launching my uh, blogging course. So basically I talk about the basics of SEO, how to implement it into your blog and into the back end of like your images, your meta descriptions, all the things. And then I also am going to do SEO research specifically for each client or customer who purchases my blogging guide so that they can have keywords to start out with um, and a good baseline to refer to. Wow. I wish I had that three years ago. <laughs> That sounds awesome. Yeah. Uh, me too. But I will tell you this. I have had a little preview of this because Kristen did this for me. And so I asked her, I said, I'm such a visual person. I'm like, can you just record some videos so I can watch them? Because I forget. Like, I, you get other things. You yeah. get busy. Yeah. And so she recorded some, like, genius videos for me that have been so helpful in my blogging. And so I'm assuming you're going to be using some of that technique in the new blogging course that you're going to be doing, right? Yes. Yeah. So all the strategy, all the techniques, everything I sent to you is in my course. <laughs> so if you purchase this course, you will see all of Lisa's oh, stuff. Yay. <laughs> so thank you, Lisa, for being That's my awesome. guinea pig, giving me permission. <laughs> yes. So you guys get to see a sneak peek of that. And I can tell you it's so helpful. And just to be able to have that resource, to have the videos, to be able to watch again and again, because sometimes we don't have time to implement or sometimes we implement it and then we have to come back to it in six months because we don't have the time. But it's a great way for somebody who wants to kind of DIY um, and dip their toes into SEO without having having to pay for like a huge package. It's just a great way for like an entry level for somebody, a business owner. So I'm so excited for you, Kristen, and for that coming up. That's just going to be so helpful to so many business owners. Thank you. I'm really excited too. I try so hard in my business to have fair prices and to be accessible to a lot of different uh, business owners. And I feel like this is a way that I get to serve more people and I get to share my knowledge and my expertise in a way that, that benefits me, but also it benefits so many other people because I am leaning towards making it more affordable and more in like more simple terms. <laughs> Simplified SEO. Yes. Which is we what we need. need that for sure. Yeah. Yes. So where can people find you if they want to um, follow you and, and find more out about your course? Jack Robin Company. 
that's me. <laughs> so you can find me at jackrobinco.virtualassistant on Instagram, or you can find me at jackrobincompany.com. Awesome. And we will have those links in the show notes. So if you want to connect with Kristen or check out her course, you can find those links in the show notes. Now, before we go, we like to ask our guests some speed questions. So are you up for a couple of questions before we sign off? Yes, bring it on. Okay. So what is one thing you have consumed in the last month? And I know you have littles at home and your husband's been traveling, but what's one thing you've consumed in the last month that's been life-giving? It could be a podcast, a book, food, a restaurant, anything that you that you've consumed that's been life-giving. Goodness. I would say Chick-fil-A. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, the Lord's amen, chicken. Sister. The Lord's chicken. <laughs> it's helped me get through so many nights. No meal planning, just drive to Chick-fil-A, get the kids some nuggets. <laughs> I love it. That is so funny and so true. Like for the stage of life that you're in with littles, like you're just like, you know what? Everybody loves Chick-fil-A and that is what we're going to make everybody happy tonight. <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. So what TV move, movie or book character do you most closely relate to? This is a hard one for me. I feel like I will put myself in anybody's shoes. I'm such an empath. <laughs> most often people associate me with or they'll tell me I remind them of Jess from New Girl. I think it's like just a quirky nature I have uh, that I over talk, that I'm a little awkward, uh, <laughs> that I'm really friendly. I take it as a compliment. I try to look at only her positive attributes, <laughs> but that is who I, I get compared to most often. <laughs> That is funny. I love that show. And she's so sweet and you are so sweet. So I can see how people like Thank associate you. those things <laughs> together. <laughs> so I have one more question for you. This wasn't in the script, but I just wanted to ask if you weren't doing SEO work and VA work for others, what would you be doing? In a dream world, I would be a homesteader. I would have little chickens running around my yard. I would collect eggs. I would have a beautiful garden. I would know everything about every plant. However, I have crazy allergies, so I could never have chickens. <laughs> oh. I can barely garden with my summer allergies. So unfortunately, I'm stuck behind a desk. <laughs> but one thing I want to say about Kristen is I love that you're so passionate about it and you love what you do. And like some of what you do can be kind of tedious because it's a lot of behind the computer. But I have never in all the times I've talked to you and worked with you, we've been working together over the last few months, just never heard you complain about anything. You're just always so excited to help people and to help people reach their goals. And that just brings you joy is to help other people. And I just I love that about you, Kristen. So I'm so glad that I found you and that, you. that we've been able to work together and that you've been here on the <laughs> podcast. Thank you for sharing all that you have with our people. I hope it's been helpful for them and that um, that you get some business, but that ultimately, you know, our businesses can work together and help each other grow because that's just what we're all about here. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for having me. This was super fun. Thanks for joining us for today's breakdown. If this episode has empowered you, please leave a review and share with the fellow CEO. Remember, you are the expert of your business, so break it down your way.